Hi, this is George Bredehoft from Valari Products. And today I'm going to talk about my latest embryo and uh, more specifically, what I'm doing to the fuselage after I've got it built, but before I start covering. There are a lot of little details that need to be taken care of before you start covering that uh, will help you with the better product after you're done. Here you can see the fuselage and the wing and the landing gear and the horizontal stab all in place. And uh, this is just a, a rough shot. And uh, we'll show you specifics of the fuselage. I'm not going to focus too much on the tail surfaces or the wing. Um, a little bit about the landing gear, but not really. This is just primarily the fuselage. Okay, we're going to start at the tail end of the fuselage. And maybe one of the first things you can notice is that right here on the tail, I had to add a 1 16th piece uh, to extend that tail a little bit uh, the farther. And that is because when I put the horizontal stab on, I noticed that the edge of the horizontal stab exceeded the edge of the fuselage. So I lined that up. That was the first modification I did. Basically a test fit of the tail frame onto the fuselage to see how everything lined up. The second thing you'll notice, got to get the focus right. The second thing you'll notice right here is the addition of a little block and a nylon screw. This is an 080 screw. I put in a couple layers of 1 16th balsa and uh, poked a hole in it, drilled it, tapped it, put in some uh, CA, thin CA, just a tiny drop, retapped it so that uh, I would have um, elevator adjustment uh, so that when, uh, when I'm test gliding, I can set that elevator by using that screw. I also put in a cross piece right here. Let me get that focused, there we go. Cross piece right here. This part will remain open, no tissue there, so I can stick a uh, screwdriver in there and adjust that uh, tail plane as necessary. Up here, you'll see this little stop has been added. There's a natural step in the fuselage construction so that uh, the tail plane sits level with the top of the fuselage. But this step is basically a stop or a notch for the DT action. A DT is not necessary. You can build your plane without a DT, but uh, I like to get my embryos back, although I'd have bad luck with that. And uh, so this is part of the DT setup. And when I designed this fuselage, I added this, uh, um, these stringers or cross braces right here in the fuselage. And that was because I anticipated force on the tail right here. And this will also keep that tail from twisting as much. Um, this, uh, this gusset is on the plan. This diagonal is on the plan. This gusset is not on the plan, much like this piece here. This gusset was added because right here is where I'm going to wrap my uh, rubber band around. I'm not going to have any pegs or anything holding on to the rubber band. It's just going to be around the fuselage. So I added st structural support right there. Moving forward, the next thing you'll notice is uh, that little orange disc in there. That's for the um, motor peg. I've had a lot of uh, models where uh, over time that this motor peg block has been worn. The hole gets wallered out. Um, sometimes it gets broken out. There's one of these on each side. Uh, inside, uh, mine are 3D printed plastic. You can use a piece of 64th ply. That works really well too. Just reinforce that area. You'll also notice that 
on all these corners back here in the rear part of the fuselage, there are corner gussets. That uh, helps with uh, this uh, cross-sectional flexing of the um, fuselage. It keeps it from, from uh, getting twisted that way. Now, it doesn't really stop the twisting this way. Um, tissue will help that. Uh, but uh, I like to put these in uh, in the back part of my fuselage. The forward part doesn't often need them. It depends on the size of your fuselage, but there's a lot of other supports in the fuselage so that it doesn't need that. Right here, you'll see a couple corner gussets that I've added. This, there's gonna be a pin, just the head of a pin that sticks out right here, and that's to wrap my DT line. Okay, so the DT is going to, the line is going to hold on to the back of the, ta uh, the horizontal stab on a pin. And there's going to be an aluminum tube, L-shaped tube that comes down here and guides that line in this direction. I'm going to put another piece of tubing right here because, as I said, a rubber band is going to go over there. And the tubing is going to go through there. And that will keep the line from getting tangled with the rubber band. Uh, in addition... I'll put a little stop on the line that'll hit that tubing that'll hold that uh, um, angle, usually about a 45 degree angle on the tail uh, so that uh, the DT stays put. So there'll be an aluminum tubing there with a stop on the line. The line will come up here. There'll be a head of a pin sticking out here and we'll wrap the line around that to kind of uh, give it an anchor and it'll come up here forward to the fuselage. So I've added these two corner gussets to support that pin. Moving forward, you'll see these two corner gussets are much larger. Um, those are for the DT fuse tubing. I'm going to use a burning fuse DT and uh, I put those in beforehand. I like to make my piece of tubing go all the way across um, the fuselage. The main reason for that is so that the fuse is going to burn down, clear down to this edge, and it's going to be pretty much flush. But I can take a piece of music wire and push it out that side and uh, and get, get that burnt fuse out of the fuselage. And then here's another pair of corner gussets that are right here. There's going to be uh, another pin head here, and that's where the dental band, is, which is attached to the line, is going to anchor here. It's going to go across the fuselage right here, and uh, then uh, when the fuse comes down to the DT or the dental band, it'll burn through that dental band. But there has to be an anchor to hold that line to keep that tail down. So these were added beforehand. Up here, these gussets are on the plan. However, uh, I've added holes so that I can put in a 1 16th dowel through there. It goes all the way through, just like the um, aluminum tubing for the DT. And this will be a rubber band wing hold down. I added this piece of uh, balsa up here because this area is going to get a lot of um, where, because of that rubber band, um, I might have to add just a little bit more height here because uh, the wing may want to slide over this little ridge here. So I may have to add a ridge. Here's another um, dowel located. This is for the front. It's for the front wing hold down. This goes through just like the others. We'll see if they're too short. Might have to make another one. These are just a uh, 1 16th dowels. The uh, windshield is going to be right here. A very minimal windshield. It's going to have a 45 degree angle like that. These diagonal braces are on the plan. I like to add them to the plan because um, when your plane comes down, it's usually going to hit on the nose on the ground. So you want to transfer forces through the fuselage. Um, 
and, and give it strength. This, this comes up here in this diagonal. Here is where the landing gear structure is. I've added um, a lot of structure in here. I like to sandwich my landing gear in between two sheets of balsa. You'll see there LG1, and this one's got an LG2 on it, but evidently it's on the inside. Um, I, I slide the landing gear in there, uh, but there's a lot of force on the landing gear when it comes in for a landing. So as the gear is pushed backward, the top of the wire wants to break out. So I've added diagonals in this fashion that keep the support the top of that front piece of wood. Um, and also when it comes back, the bottom of the back wants to push. So I've added um, diagonals on there. And uh, we'll see if I can install the landing gear. This is how I shape it. Um, these wheel pants are just on right now temporarily. Um, I'll color them and then uh, later cement them on. That's why they're flopping around. Um, but you notice it's got a little bit of a angle to it here that pushes the landing gear forward. I like that design. But I've got... Uh, Instead of just making a straight cross piece, I put a little angle in this so that it gives it a little flex and it springs that landing gear outward. Um, so I have to squeeze it together a little bit, insert it in there, anchor one side, bring the other side down like that. So that uh, that's how the landing gear are. It's really hard to do this looking through the camera. So as the landing gear comes, or the plane comes down, it pushes back like this. So like I said, the top part is gonna to wanna to push forward and the bottom part is gonna to wanna to push back. So that's why I put in those gussets. Um, I always like to put in, uh, put in sheet balsa around the nose um, a lot of plans, especially old timers, just have a single stick up here. Uh, that's okay for the basic building, but uh, there's a lot of handling that goes on. When you're putting the propeller on, you're grabbing it and, and uh, all of that, the nose block. So I reinforce this area because it's going to get a lot of handling. Um, I'm 100% sure that the tissue in this area is going to break out eventually because as you see I'm handling I'm not covering uh, I'm, I'm exceeding the sheet so I'm going to be pushing on that. Uh, this is my nose block. I always mark the top of the nose block uh, so that uh, I know which way's up. Uh, some people use a, a solid color up here. Just make sure you mark it somehow. I've added a, uh, you can see this is cut out for gizmo geezer nose button. I've added one of my 3D printed uh, washer on here that, so that it helps spread the, the pressure from that uh, um, nose button over a larger area so it doesn't break out the, the uh, uh, balsa so much. Anyway, a lot of things to consider as you're building it, um, especially with the DT system. You need to really figure out how you're going to lay that out before you uh, start covering because otherwise you're just going to have to tear apart your covering to install things like this tubing and these anchor points. So um, think about that beforehand. Uh, again, with your wing mounts, drill those holes before it's even covered. That way you can make sure they're in the right place uh, and so on. So this is a, a much modified fuselage from stock. Oh, here's an, a cross brace that's shown on the original print plan. Um, I've got double back here on the bottom, not on the top, on the bottom. This is so that this area will also be open. No tissue. Tissue will be here and here, but not here. That's so that when you put the rubber, rubber motor in, you can uh, align the peg, and this is the rear motor peg, and it just uh, goes in like that. You can actually see where your uh, rubber is, is and uh, so on, so that you can load it easy 
when that's uh, covered with tissue, it's hard to see. Sometimes it's a little bit translucent depending on the color. I like to use black on my sport planes and, uh, and then uh, make it solid black, dark, dark black with uh, India ink. So there's absolutely no way that I can see through the tissue even on the sunniest of days. So leave that hole open so that you can actually see into the fuselage while you're loading your rubber motor. Uh, that's about it. Prep your fuselage before you cover it and uh, it'll be, be more successful. Thank you.